For the 2022-23 school year, we saw more students enroll at Laney College. And I'd like to think one of the reasons was our continuing and growing investment in meeting student basic needs such as food insecurities and the like. We actually hired or established a new position, basic needs coordinator, one taken on by Katrina Santos, who had formerly served in other capacities at Laney College. As she began her role, I invited Katrina back to the president's desk to ask her about student basic needs and about the responsibilities she has. It's our new basic needs coordinator, Katrina Santos. Now, while she's new to the role, I have to say welcome back, Katrina, because this is your second time visiting us. Yes, thank you so much for having me. Could you share a little bit of yours, just uh, your pathway and as a college student, things you experienced? Yes, definitely. So I started off at Community College, originally from San Jose in the South Bay, and I went to De Anza and had a daughter at 18. So I was just a student that really had no direction, wasn't too sure what I wanted to do. And so I probably, I wouldn't say wasted time, but just wasn't sure. So I was in community college for about eight years, just taking classes, feeling kind of shy to talk to a counselor. You know, I'm like first generation college student on both sides of my family. So I didn't have a clue. Wow. And so once I finally, you know, was like, okay, I need to do something. I was able to transfer to SF State and get my undergrad in history, which is... Katrina, lots yeah. <laughs> lots of people kind of have that turning point mm -hmm. or that tipping point. So I'd like to take, take you back to that moment where you were kind of not sure about what you wanted to do. What was it that turned things for you? Definitely time. Oh, I was starting to see some of my friends finish school and kind of go into careers and having a daughter that need support. I just kind of was like, all right, I got to get on track and get onto a path. And my path was history, which I don't really do much of that these days, but it just really got me to a place of just feeling more empowered and feeling like I could finish my education and graduate and be real example for my daughter to continue her education and that it's important to go to school. What did you see in your fellow students that provided you with direction specifically? I think just seeing them being inspired and just hopeful of like the future. And once you attain these educational goals, like you want more and you want to do other stuff. And also you maybe want to give back to the community. So for me, it was really learning my own power and then also being able to give back to my community and students and for them to really learn that it's okay to not have a path right away and eventually things fall in place, but there are support systems for all of us that can kind of help us get on path. So I, so far, I think uh, Katrina, as we're getting to know her, and again, this is her second appearance on the show, your pathway at Laney has been one of, I would say, prosperous success. You know, you joined us and then you transitioned into the role for the SOAR program, which really began to be kind of that symbol of this year, that vehicle of personal attention for students. And as always, students, if you have questions, you can always call us at 510-464-3540. And if you called that number, chances are you talked to Katrina, right? <laughs> and now you've transitioned in, into the basic needs coordinator role. So I guess my next question is from history major to someone who's just done an incredible job in community college. What was that part of your journey and your decision like? I think for me, as a SOAR program specialist, we were already doing some basic needs supports for our students, providing transportation or book vouchers and just getting them connected with outside resources. So when the position was available, it just kind of made sense for me to transition to this next role and just really tackle some of the needs that our students have, which is housing is a big one, food insecurity, and clothing. So that's kind of what my three main goals right now, working in the Basic Needs Center and just providing those kind of warm touch services for students. If they have questions, I'm going to kind of help them navigate to whatever department they need to get their needs met. Working with the SOAR program, what, what did you take away from it? What, what were some things you learned and what how do you think students benefited? I think I just learned really how our system works at Laney College or at the district level. 
and then just really being that point person for students. And I think for me as a past student, I never had those options or I never really tried to look for those options. So I think for me, just learning to kind of reach out to students. Before we get to the basic needs portion of our conversation today, uh, Katrina Santos right here on 96.9 KGPC. What advice just in general, Katrina, would you give students as we hit this home stretch the last few weeks of the semester? I think it's really if you're having questions or some concerns, it's really just using your voice and reaching out to a counselor or your professor or even a fellow classmate and just really being truthful of what you need. And so my goal is to always make students feel welcomed and comfortable if I see them walking looking lost, I'm always going to say, hey, how's it going? And I think just really knowing your needs and really trying to get that support. Katrina, in helping students get their basic needs, what do you find is the largest challenge, not for the students, Mm -hmm. but for you to try to assist the students with getting their basic needs? I think, you know, obviously funding is always the key point of everything. So for us, this is a new position on our campus. So building from the bottom up, I'm a one person show. So really just trying to get everything up and running for students and then just being able to provide solid resources for them. You know, obviously we don't have any funding for housing, but like, let me get you to an organization that can actually provide support for you, not just a number that they're not going to get a hold of somebody. So I think just really kind of creating those those community partnerships and really having them work for our students. Excellent. So we'll kind of take a pause on this conversation. Can, Katrina, can you stay with us for a few more minutes? Yes. Excellent. Well, Felicia, as always, joining us virtually, but always close by for our partners of Laney Feature is Raya Zion, who will acquaint our, acquaint our listeners with information about Oakland and regional partners who offer opportunities for students as well as so many other great things going on in the Employment Services Office. Raya, how are you doing today? Hey, Raya. Hey, how's it going, guys? Doing well, doing well. Now, I do want to ask a question. You've got a pretty awesome looking vehicle on your screen there. What is that? That's right. That's my new car. I drove it to work the other day. No, (laughs) actually, that was from a great event that we did. We had the African American Male Achievement Program from OUSD. Yeah, that was business. great. That's just before spring break. And what was really cool about the event is not only did the, the high schoolers and middle schoolers visit our shops, but also after lunch, we had breakout sessions. So Tesla was yeah. one of the companies that gave break, career breakout sessions to the kids or the young adults. And uh, so was East Bay Mud, so was Oakland Fire Department, and of course, our very own Doug Cobb. The right. council and, and Raya, Raya, you'll be pleased to know you just mentioned a bunch of partners and one of our very special partners is actually in studio with us today, Carl Chan. So uh, oh, hi. Yeah, yeah, he's with us as well. So Raya, what's going on at Laney? Uh, tell us what you have for us. Well, I mean, the big thing is we're all gearing up for the open house on April 29th. And that's right. That's our career and technical education open house. Right. Yes. The big one. This how, is many, Saturday. how many years has that been going? Well, you know, I've been here nine years, and it was before I was here. Oh, okay, long standing. So I'm event. sure it's been around the block a few times there. Okay. But in uh, meeting our corporate partners, because we do get sponsorships from companies, I became best friends with the folks over at Marina Security, and, and they're the ones that do security for Laney College and Peralta. And I found out that they have several positions available not only at Laney, but at other campuses throughout Peralta. Oh. So that's what I want to share. There are positions at Laney for, they do need some day shift security guards, and that pays $20 an hour. Okay. Uh, Monday through Friday. Also at Berkeley Community College, there's a swing shift supervisor. And around, if they elevate aviation, there's a swing shift supervisor guard as well. So there are several positions on this campus or other for off the campuses for security guards for those students that want some flexibility. Raya. And, yes. I have a question. You talked about your, your partnerships with Tesla, East Bay Mud, and so forth. 
Do you know off the top of your head some of the opportunities that they will be offering for students? Sure. Aids Free Month is a little tricky just because there are positions, but people have to take the test. They have a physical test and also a math test. There are several steps to being hired, but definitely there are some like plumber one positions, which is kind of, is an entry level position. Tesla is look always looking for assemblers, but what we're talking to Tesla about, hopefully this will come on campus, is a program that they've developed and we can partner with them on is a technologist position. So. It's, it would be a one semester program wow. to be an engineering technologist. Then those people would be able to work at Tesla. So the CTE department, Ali, Tomas, and myself, we're, we're working on that right now. Raya, you mentioned Dave as a partner. Who Who is Dave? Did I say Dave? Maybe it was my New York accent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember a Dave. No, with, with Tesla. <laughs> my accent. Oh, okay. I okay. Guess, I, I have I have uh, several names for Tesla, but none of them are Dave. Oh, okay. <laughs> Dave, Dave. Oh, okay. Dave. Excellent. All right. So, and it sounds like the counselors who was involved a lot has been Douglas Cobb. Is that correct? Oh yeah, okay. he's great. In fact, we are doing the open house. We now that we're friends with the African American Male Achievement Program, we're going to have a separate cohort room just for them. And also, Doug introduced us to an organization called Kingmakers which is a comparable one to the African-American Male Achievement Program at OUSD, but they're in Alameda, they're everywhere else. So they'll have a separate cohort and Doug will be talking to them regarding career exploration and what kind of certificates they could get from us in order to achieve the income and the career that they want to get in the future. All right, so we have the CTE open house on April 29th from 10 to two. Free and food. then we also have a number of opportunities with Marina Security for students. Yep. Raya, how do students get in touch with you if they're interested in any of this? Well, my phone number is 510-464-3530, or my email is rzion at peralta.edu. Excellent. Raya, thank you as always for joining us. We'll thank see you, you next week. Take, Take care. care. Excellent. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. So... We're also going to be saying goodbye to our guests. All right. And thank you so much yes. for coming. I'm just saying goodbye. No problem. <laughs> no, Carl, great, great to have you in the studio. You're welcome anytime. And uh, we'll see you. And please uh, give our best to everyone at thank the chamber. Thank you for coming, Carl. Yes, yeah. <laughs> So Katrina, I know you're going to be transitioning soon. So let's talk about your new role as the basic needs coordinator. First of all, how can students benefit by reaching out to you? So I am the community hub person. I'm your one-stop shop for all basic needs services. We are in the middle of getting furniture. We have a designated space for students. So I've been working on getting that furnished, but if students have questions about housing. I have a few resources there. I have some clothing for if students are in need of some clothes. And then also we do have CalFresh that comes once a week. And so that helps students. What's CalFresh? So CalFresh is the California program for food benefits. So a student can qualify based on how much they make and they can receive benefits on a monthly basis for that. Randy, uh, just I want to bring you into this part of the conversation. Sure. What are you finding during the semester that students are reaching out for as aspects of Fall is Free or as part of a lot of the basic needs services that Katrina has been referencing? I think the CalFresh program has been a major help. Like I see tons of students always going and get the the pro, it's the produce, right? Stuff like so they'll they basically apply for it and mm -hmm. if they qualify, they they get like a card that has like money on it and then they can use that to go grocery oh, shopping. Oh, got it, got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's been the CalFresh program and then what aspects of Fall is Free and Spring is Free has served to benefit students who have basic needs? 
So I think just being able to offer free tuition has been great. I think that allows students to utilize their money for other things like, you know, rent and that type of stuff. And then we also have our pantry that we offer throughout the week. And so students come and they can get a box of uh, produce. They can get some dry goods. And so we offer that for students once a week. And I think just having the free food, I think we serve about 400 meals a day if I'm not mistaken. And so there obviously is a need for this type of service for students. And so it just, it feels really good to just see students being fed that makes them more productive in school and then just being able to take some groceries home to maybe their families. So so if there's a student that needs to take advantage of the CalFresh and they've already signed up and they're eligible to, to receive services, what day? It's one day a week, so what day is it? Uh, we usually have people on on Thursdays. So we Thursdays? have a table out in okay. either the student center or outside mm-hmm. in the quad, depending mm-hmm. on the weather. And so they're an outside agency that comes and works with our students and answers okay. any questions that they have, mm-hmm. and then we'll help them apply through the application. And then once they apply, they can pick up food when? What day? So the food is separate. So we give free food just at Laney College just for our pantry. But vegetables and Mm -hmm. so forth, is that any day as well? We usually do that Wednesdays and Thursdays. Wednesdays and Thursdays. And is there a specific a specific time? Yes. In which... <laughs> I should probably give you all that information. Right? <laughs> so we have it from 1030 to 6. And so it is a pretty busy day when we do offer this. Mm-hmm. Students will line up outside the student center and sometimes the line will wrap around the building. So and, it's And do students need to bring bags or anything? We do have some bags that we offer, but you know, it could get a little heavy, so we started seeing students with like their own carts, which okay. is good. And then some students they just they don't take everything or sometimes they feel maybe uncomfortable to get the food items. So my goal is really to destigmatize the idea of getting pantry. Right. We need yeah. it. You no, know, and, so. <laughs> and, and, no I, what I really enjoy about it is we are really setting up the concept of a market as opposed to a food line. Mm-hmm. And I think that mm-hmm. plays right to the destigmatization that Katrina has been speaking of. Yeah, Could I you... think that's what I was thinking of was that. But I was also going to ask, do you have like just off the top of your head, any students that have gone on to like do great things who pro- was part of this program? So we just started. This is our second oh, month. Oh, that, like literally oh, wow. we're super okay. brand new. But my goal is really to have our pantry and our basic needs center student run. So I feel mm-hmm. like that would be a really good area for student empowerment and just it's their pantry. It's their center. So my goal is really to get it student ran and then just allow them to be able to. I'm going to extend Randy's question just because it's such a good one. And this is why we have a journalism major on the show <laughs> right here on 96.9 KGPC. Katrina, whether it was the role of SOAR or basic needs, and you don't need to name any names on the air, but is there a student story that sticks with you? I think all my students have amazing stories. I mean, we've had students that were houseless and they still came and received services and were going to class and they graduated. Or some students who you know, we're kind of on the fence of taking one class and then decided to go back full time. So I think there's not one story that stands out, but just seeing students again, feeling that empowerment to really achieve their goals um, is always inspiring for me. I was going to ask, going back to you said you're working on like getting furniture for space for students. So I was going to say, would that be available for students to like do homework or because I find myself in between classes sometime, whether I have to check on my like day job or homework, I run up to the ASLC space to use my laptop where it's quiet and stuff. Because if you go to the library, sometimes it's not that quiet. So would that be available for students? Yes. As well? So my goal, I got 100 goals. One of my goals is really to create our student center as a home base for students, for them to come and feel welcome, to be able to just hang out, do their homework. And so with the basic needs center, we're located on the third floor in the student center. Once that is furnished, then we'll have some computers and desks and things like that that students can utilize. 
Katrina, I know you have to leave us because you have a very important leadership role as the vice president of the classified Senate. But just before you go, what is the one thing about your role now that is giving you the most joy? I'm really just about giving back. You know, I came to Laney College with really the intention of working with students here in Oakland. And so for me, I always say bad day is a good day at Laney College. And I just love to see students smile. And that just brings me lots of joy. And just to be able to give back or give them like my story where they feel like they can continue is really the best. Well, that's great. That's so what's something that keeps you up at night? So I'm currently in grad school, and oh. so grad school keeps me up at night. You're doing a lot. That, that keeps a lot right. of people up. Right. Lots of people yeah. up. Yeah. What, 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 are you, what are you majoring in? I am getting my master's in public administration at Cal State East Bay. Oh, that's okay. fabulous. No, I, well, good luck. Yeah, Thank and I, you. You know what? I feel like just having been through a leadership program, Katrina, with all that you're doing, and honestly, when I emphasize personal attention, to people at Laney, I always point to you as a shining example of that. So I think that whatever program you're studying in, you're not just learning, but I think you're teaching in some ways to your classmates and per perhaps even to those who teach you. So definitely greatly you. appreciate you having on the, having you on the show today. Have a great classified Senate meeting and look forward to welcoming right. you back. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. Potentially, Congratulations on that. <laughs> potentially as our first third time guest on the president's right? desk. Right. <laughs> 